Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome for everyone to come to our schedule. And the name of this, uh, the, for our tutorial, the name of our tutorial is Lambda Model for Recommendation, uh, Progressive, and Future Direction. And actually, uh, this is this is not the first time for us to present in this tutorial. Uh, our first time to present it is uh, six months ago uh, at the Cigar EP. And actually, for, for the, this second version, we just summarized the contents in the first version and updated the uh, recent work in the past uh, six past six months. And here is the outline of the uh, of the tutorial. And uh, for for me and uh, Wen Jian and Zhang Yang, uh, we will present physically, and Ke Qin and Ji Zhi will present uh, remotely because the registration fee and the hotel is too expensive. And actually this is a, this is um uh, this is a very old thing for the background of a uh, recommender system. And with the development of the uh, of the recommend, we are facing an increasing increasingly severe problem of uh, information overload. For instance, on the uh, Amazon platform there are over uh, 12 million items available, and on TikTok, over uh, 35 million new videos are, are, are uploaded every day, filtering out, uh, filtering out content that align, aligns with uh, users' interest from this vast amount of information is crucial. So, uh, recommendations, uh, recommender system plays a, a pivotal role in uh, achieving personalized information, field, uh, information seeking. And, and uh, uh, generally, uh, this kind of recommender systems uh, extract user interest from historical interactions and recommend items based on this identified interest. Uh, and roughly, uh, the, uh, roughly, the workflow of most uh, recommender systems can be written as a, as a loop. The system first uh, trains a recommender model with user in uh, user interactions in the history uh, to learn user interest, and then uh, it recommends uh, potential items of interest to each user. Once the user um, engages with the recommended items, the recommender system further uh, adjusts the strategy based on the new feedback, and roughly uh, yeah, uh, the this is that work in uh, in an iterative manner. And the uh, mainstream settings uh, for research on uh, recommender system uh, are collaborative, uh, collaborative filtering, uh, that is to say CF, and click-through uh, click uh, uh, click rate prediction, that is with CTR. And CF focuses on modeling collaborative uh, information between users and atoms. Uh, to, to some degree, the core uh, lies in uh, modeling similarity in interaction, is, uh, interaction behavior and relying on assumptions like uh, similar users would interact with similar uh, with similar items. And in recent years, uh, as we all know, uh, hundreds of uh, or thousands of uh, safe models have been proposed. And I believe most people in, in this room uh, can name a few of them. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry. And, and similarly, uh, many, many CTR models uh, are also pre uh, presented with focus on site information and content information, like user features and all kinds of user features and item features. So on the, on the other hand, uh, larger models uh, have also been uh, continuous, continuously developed uh, from rule-based ones to uh, ones, learning-based ones, and uh, pre-trained ones, and the recent large language models. Since the emergence of ChatGPT uh, in uh, 2022, uh, large language model uh, has become a very, 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 very hot topic. 
compared with traditional uh, language models, uh, large language models have uh, at least uh, a billion of parameters. After training with a uh, master reader, yeah. they have developed a shocking uh, test understanding generation and generation activities. Uh, to be honest, we don't like the concept uh, of uh, large language model, and we don't think that large model is good term because it is very hard to uh, identify to define what is large and different people may have different understanding of that. So in this um, in this tutorial, we treat uh, language models with the following uh, properties as large language models, including uh, billions of parameters, uh, emergent uh, capabilities, rich knowledge and language capabilities, instruction following, in content learning, child software planning, so on and so forth. Okay, let me let, let me try it. Is this okay? Yes, it seems that. Let's try. <laughs> So the, uh, the progress and success of large language models uh, has greatly affected uh, different fields, uh, such as, uh, such as uh, uh, natural language processing, computer vision, so on and so forth. And uh, uh, it has changed the form of uh, some applications and tasks. Uh, for example, uh, introducing ChatGPT into uh, into search engine leads to uh, leads to a new uh, third party data. As to recommender systems, we believe the, uh, they will also be largely affected and uh, benefited by uh, large language models. Uh, before diving into uh, this large language model, uh, before diving into large language model system uh, for recommendation, we first introduce some basic concepts of uh, pre-trained language models and their uh, influence uh, on recommender system. Uh, the core model architecture, as we all know, the core architecture of many pre-trained uh, language models is uh, is, uh, is transformer, uh, which is originally presented uh, in a machine learning paper, uh, machine translation paper. And uh, transformer contains self-attention based encoder and decoder as to uh, machine translation, the encoder processes source language and use bidirectional attention to understand the whole source language. The decoder generates the uh, next token from the target, uh, target uh, from the source language and based on the source information and the target language uh, token generated in the uh, autographic uh, method manner. Generally, the uh, transformer provides the foundation for uh, for many pre-trained uh, language models. And uh, Bert is uh, one of the uh, most initial, uh, initial ones of these pre-trained language models, uh, which is designed to uh, pre-train uh, deep bidirectional representation from uh, from unlabeled uh, unlabeled text by jointly uh, conditioning on both light and uh, red contacts in all layers. Special, uh, specifically, uh, during pre-training, it sim uh, simplifies, uh, it simply, uh, simply masks uh, some, some, uh, some tokens in the, in the input uh, randomly, and then predict this uh, master tokens with both uh, the contacts on the left side and the right side. And the procedure, uh, this procedure is typically referred to uh, as a uh, mask lang uh, language model. After this pre-training, it can be fine-tuned to, uh, to be adapted to different tasks. And generally it follows a 
follows the the encoder structure of the transformer, and it, uh, and it is very good at uh, understanding uh, uh, the textual input. And GPT is uh, is another branch of uh, pre-trained language models. Uh, different from BERT, it uh, it adapts uh, it uh, adopts uh, causal uh, language modeling and autoregressive uh, approach, uh, which always use the uh, previous token to predict the next next token based on causal uh, language understand uh, modeling. Uh, transformer uh, decoder architecture is adopted. And just uh, takes the uh, left to right uh, attention. And GPT is good at uh, uh, it's good at generation tasks. So according to uh, this work, uh, many many work on utilizing language models, uh, not the large ones, language models in recommended system. We summarize the benefit of uh, of language model for recommended system into four aspects. First, uh, in terms of model architecture, self-attention and transformer architecture are applied to the recommended system, uh, aiming to liberate their strong rep uh, representation ability. And uh, second, the trained language model can be used to, uh, to encode the textual information of the user or, or the item and enhance the, uh, the, the representation of user and items. Third, in terms of uh, task description, uh, there, are work, uh, there are some work, uh, some works uh, use uh, a T5 like this structure to describe different tasks in language to unify, uh, to unify different recommendation, uh, recommended tasks. And finally, the uh, pre-training, uh, fine-tuning uh, uh, paradigm uh, are also uh, also are also uh, leveraged in recommendation task. This uh, this these are the four. Uh, sorry. <sighs> okay, I think maybe I put the I have put the curse here. Maybe it, it would be better. Okay, uh, existing, uh, existing uh, language model for recommendation can be mainly dived into three categories. The first step is to uh, directly apply the uh, language model, uh, the architecture of language model uh, to the recommendation. That is, uh, that is to directly model the, uh, model the, the, the historical interaction uh, the user history. Uh, with this kind of uh, model architecture. Uh, and the second one is, uh, as I introduced in the previous slide, the new model as uh, to, 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 to get back the atom on the uh, repetition. And the last one is the, it's using the, uh, using the language model to, uh, to take, uh, to unify all kinds of uh, recommended tasks. And birth rec, uh, I think most of us, most of us in this room know this work. And it's a representative uh, approach to applying the language model architecture to uh, in recommended system. It uses the board model, uh, the, the architecture of board model uh, to model the uh, recommendation data, to model the uh, user history. And specifically, it replaces the token sequence in BERT with the recommended ID sequence and uses the uh, encoder transformer to model the history, uh, the historical item sequence of user interaction, capture the atom atom relationships. Um, former is just a recent, uh, very recent one in, published uh, in KDD last year. Um, it's also very, uh, it's also very famous and another representative uh, approach. Uh, it uses language model architecture to model. Uh, it also uses the language model uh, 
uh, to to represent the uh, historical user user history, and the core of a uh, reformer is using only text to represent items, and that is say at a distant uh, item ID, and in this way reform, uh, reformer can solve the constant uh, problems better. And here is the here is the here is the here is the details of the of the architecture. Uh, generally, it just uh, all of the all of the features and titles, all kinds of information of an item into a one uh, item sentence, and then uh, it can connect all of item sentence in the user history into a, a, a very long sentence or an item paragraph, and then use the word encoder. To uh, get the representation of this uh, history, yeah, and with all of the with all of the uh, representations of each item and the user sequence, then uh, and using the contrastive learning uh, method to 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 augment the pre-training. As you know, the the pre-training uh, that is to say, it, it uses two uh, to pre-train the model. One is the uh, just like Bird use the mass language model, it must have some tokens in the sequence. And the other one is the contrastive learning. And the a core idea of this contrastive learning is like the is make the uh, positive atom of the uh, user uh, be similar. The representation of positive uh, atom is similar with the user representation. Um, yeah, uh, 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 to uh, import atom information using the uh, language model. And the others think the natural language provides uh, a general data form to bridge the semantic gap uh, across tasks or domains, and thus uh, could have learn a universal representation for different tasks. We just believe the others leverage the free train uh, language model uh, BERT to learn the test embedding and leverage uh, uh, MOE uh, based uh, uh, module to map the embeddings into a universal form uh, suitable for a different uh, recommended task. And the last type of work is directly uh, translating recommendation tasks into uh, natural language tasks, and that is using natural language to describe or prompt. To, to describe the different tasks, P as well the uh, representative methods inspired uh, inspired by Google's uh, T, uh, which uses language to describe different types and formats of recommended tasks, uh, so that different tasks have the same input and output formats and are unified into uh, natural language tasks and can be so that it can be handled uh, by uh, uh, by a uniform model. And here is the uh, here is the architecture of of, of P. And it, it is quite similar with T and uh, it uses the uh, the encoder transformer to process all the input information and then uh, decode uh, decode the use the decoder uh, to uh, to generate the output uh, in an automatic manner. And in particular in P item is still uh, represented by ID. Uh, why we mentioned that is because there is another work, uh, I'm saying strike. Uh, it is also, uh, it, it also works, it also works as, uh, as P, uh, which use text to describe, uh, to describe different, uh, recommended tasks, but it, uh, it uses, uh, all, uh, it uses text only to describe the item. So roughly, I have finished the first part of the uh, of this tutorial with the introduction and with the background of uh, language model and language model for REC. And I will pass to uh, Ke Jin for the introduction of uh, the development of uh, language models. Hi, Ke Jin, can, can you hear us? Oh, what? Wait, OK. Oh. You can share your screen. Oh. I see the uh, Sorry, sorry. I need to switch the uh, switch it to the other other screen.
Okay. That seems good. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Today, I will first provide some background of uh, uh, the development of LLMs. Then I will briefly introduce the related work and progress mm -hmm. in large language models for recommendations, specifically using in context learning technology. Uh, when we talk about the development of LLMs, you know, we first uh, think about the OpenAI. OpenAI initially uncovered that uh, with the expansion of both data volume and parameters, model exhibit uh, improved the convergence on test sites. Concurrently, they observed that a model's ultimate performance can be dominated by a power exponential function. Utilizing this function, it becomes feasible to train a model with a small set of parameters and predict the convergence for a model with a significant larger parameters. Uh, as illustrated in this figure, uh, this method uh, enables the model to predict uh, the performance under conditions of uh, extensive data and uh, expanded uh, parameter scale. Uh, uh, moreover, when the amount of the data and model parameters increase at the same time, the model performance uh, will always get better. When one of the factors is limited, the model performance as better as the other factor increases, but we are gradually decay. As shown in this figure, we can see that the performance improvement, uh, the performance improvement of a relatively small uh, model as the amount of data increases is almost negligible. Similarly, increasing the number of parameters brings an almost negligible performance, uh, uh, brings an, uh, an almost negligible performance improvement as the amount of data is small. Um, in addition, when the amount of calculation is fixed, but the data scale and model parameters are not fixed. They also found that uh, the most cost-effective calculation method is to train a large language model rather than a, a small language model. Uh, even if the large language model eventually the coverage state cannot be reached, but a small mo small model can coverage. Uh, moreover, they also found that the amount of calculation increases, the optimal model parameters also increases rapidly. Mm. Therefore. It is concluded that uh, when the amount of correlation increases, the most efficient training method is to use a, a, a large language model, increases the batch, and correspondingly expand the amount of the data volume. So when you look at this uh, figure, you can uh, you, you can look at the yellow line uh, horizontally or vertically. You can always get this uh, conclusion. The scaling law uh, function represents a significant milestone in the advancement of Large language models. It is uh, the uh, very property that has uh, instilled the belief that the emergency of intelligence can be achieved through the augmentation of data and model parameters. Um, similar discoveries have also made in other related fields of large language models, such as mathematics. Uh, in recent years, the work of Meta in the field of recommender system has also demonstrated the scaling law uh, industrial level data. Um, although this is still a preliminary attention for recommender systems, uh, it still draws significant attention from both industry and academic. We will elaborate on this aspect in detail in the final section of this tutorial on uh, future directions. Uh, apart from the skin law, uh, two other pivotal techniques have emerged in the age of uh, large animal models, are uh, instruction turning and performance alignment. Uh, instruction turning is a method employed to Mm, uh, employed to refine larger models for different tasks. Uh, this involves conditioning the model on task-specific instructions accompanied by corresponding input-output examples. By doing so, the model acquires the ability to produce suitable outputs in response to given instructions. Uh, instruction training uh, empowers larger models to be tailored for a wider array of spe specialized uh, demand tasks, enhancing their observability and adaptability. Uh, <clears throat> apart from uh, apart from the instruction turning preference uh, alignment uh, is another key technology uh, key, key techniques in the area of agile models. Uh, it was uh, first introduced to lateral models by opening eyes through the technique of reinforced learning from human feedback. The IOHF involves the model engaging with human and learning from their feedbacks. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, learning from their feedbacks to refine its behavior. As uh, illustrated in the left of this figure, a uh, substantial data set is first gathered to assess the quality of the model's generated responses via human annotations. 
this this data is now used to train a reward model, which is intended to adequately substitute humans in the role of evaluating the quality of the model's response. Subsequently, the reward model in conjunction with the proxy policy optimization algorithm is 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 utilized to implement a reinforcement learning from human feedback. Uh, furthermore, last year, research from Stanford introduced the DPO method for preference alignment, which offers stability, computational efficiency, and compared to PPO. And more importantly, they need don't uh, when we train with PPO, we don't need to sampling from the uh, larger models during the uh, during our training. Uh, with the further development of the information uh, um, technology, an increasing number of uh, Open source and closed source larger models have demonstrated powerful capability. As illustrated in this figure, an increasing number of models are demonstrating the capability to approach the performance of GPT-4. This will offer people more expectations and prospects. Uh, before, uh, while doing, uh, while, 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 while I produced this uh, slide yesterday, I was going to say that uh, the end-to-end -end larger models capable of handling multimodal inputs to multimodal outputs are rapidly developing. I, we could all believe that uh, in the near future, we would uh, witness a brand new form of these language, large language models. However, uh, today OpenAI has released their brand new end-to-end -end model, GPT-4, uh, which handles voice, video, and text modalities. And I have to say that this new form of larger models has already arrived. So with the enhancement of larger models, uh, what benefits do they bring us? The larger model brings us numerous uh, numerous uh, capabilities. Here, I will briefly mention the broader representation of the capabilities involved in the work we will be discussing in the following parts of our tutorial. For more details and uh, interesting capabilities, uh, you can refer to relevant works and uh, some surveys on larger models. Firstly, larger models uh, possess abundant uh, world knowledge, strong conversational skills, uh, ability to follow instructions, reasoning capabilities, planning capabilities, capabilities, and the ab ability to use the tool and the LLM can also act as an agent. Uh, regarding the first two, understanding them is more intuitive. Sufficient word knowledge refers to uh, the extensive knowledge the larger models acquires during their free training on the massive amounts of text data, uh, enabling it to comprehend most of the uh, things in the world. Besides, conversational skills are also straightforward, uh, meaning the language models can engage in uh, free-flowing communication with humans. Uh, so let's first introduce the capability of in-context learning. Uh, in-context learning emphasizes the model's ability to learn knowledge based on user context. For example, uh, users can directly ask the model to perform translation or provide a few translation examples and expired the model to translate uh, to translate the following text based on the format of those examples. As the complexity of instruction increases, the demand for the model's ability also grows. Therefore, our qualified large, large language models often possess strong in context learning capabilities. Here we present an interesting example. Uh, specifically, in sentiment, uh, in sentiment classification class, uh, tasks, Traditional sentiment, uh, sentiment classification um, determines whether a sentence express a positive or negative sentiment. Uh, for, instance, for instance, the, sen the sentence, I'm very happy today, is a positive sentiment. So in the example on the left of this figure, the model should output a positive. Uh, however, flip the label in context learning refers to reversing all the sentiments in the example provided to the model uh, as inputs. Uh, this means that uh, for positive sentiments, we import the label as negative, and, with, uh, and for the ne uh, negative sentiments, we import the label as the positive. Uh, therefore, for the example in the middle of this figure, our output result should be negative. Finally, for the example on the right of this figure, we randomly uh, replace positive and negative with other strings and hope that the model learns this pattern. Uh, generally speaking, the most challenging case is uh, in the middle. It means that the model has to completely overcome the knowledge it gained during pre-training, um, and uh, it needs to comply with the user's uh, contextual demands. Uh, the, experiment, uh, the, uh, the experiment results also uh, show that the larger and the stronger the model is, the smaller performance gap between the first two ones. Uh, 
This results indicate that the, the stronger the capability of the model, the stronger its ability to learn patterns from the context. Uh, apart from the uh, in context learning, Lara models have a powerful feature of instruction following ability. Uh, specifically, the ability of the model, uh, uh, this is the ability of the model to generate appropriate response according to the user's uh, instructions. This ability makes larger models highly valuable in many application scenarios, such as the question answering systems, chatbots, text generation, and so on. And to achieve instruction following, larger models need to possess the following abilities. The first one is understanding the instruction. The model needs to understand the instruction given by the user, including the purpose, the content, and the requirements of the instructions. The second one is generating uh, responses. Uh, based on the understanding of the instruction, the model needs to generate a response relevant to the instruction. Uh, this requires the model to have a certain level of knowledge and the reasoning ability. The third one is adapting to the third one is adapting to a different scenario. Uh, different application scenarios may require different response, mod, uh, response methods. Uh, for example, uh, formal language should be used in formal occasions, and other uh, increasing expressions can be used in informal occasions. The model needs to be able to generate an appropriate response according to the requirements of the scenario. Uh, and the final one is adapting to different users. Uh, different users may have different requirements and preferences. For example, some users may want the model to generate a concise response, while, other, uh, while others may want the model to generate detailed responses. So the model uh, needs to be able to um, generate an uh, appropriate response according to user's uh, requirements. Okay, uh, reasoning and the planning ability are also an uh, important capability of larger models. Uh, first, let's talk about the reasoning, reasoning ability. Uh, also, if you still remember, a magic scale, let's think step by step, can allow the model to achieve significant improvements in mathematical uh, reasoning tasks. Uh, instead of directly outputting the results, this sentence made the model generate the corresponding intermediate steps before outputting the final result. Uh, in fact, as early as uh, January uh, 2022, the chain of thought was called uh, different from traditional direct uh, prompts, as shown in, this, uh, uh, in the left of this figure, uh, child solve instructs the model to write the solving process uh, and then output the answer. And this demonstrates that the model's uh, reasoning ability. Uh, this, this innovative approach of uh, incorporating reasoning into model outputs was a breakthrough in enhancing the model's uh, problem solving uh, capabilities. By generating the intermediate steps, the model not only demonstrates its ability to reason, but also provides transparency and insights into its decision-making process. The utilization of uh, chef thought further highlighted the model's uh, potential to engage in critical thinking and uh, logical deduction. Uh, next, let's, let's examine an uh, example of uh, planning. Uh, in this scenario, it becomes apparent that relying solely on chef thought is insufficient to assist the model in completing a legal task which it may not be aware of. Uh, well, leveraging tools such as searching engine enable LLM to plan and obtain appropriate results, the lack of reasoning can be low to uh, errors. Uh, the lack uh, to errors while generating the final answer. However, while combining the abilities of planning and reasoning, as illustrated on the right of the, this figure, LLM um, can effectively play how to analyze a search engine and make logical detection based on the search engine's results and the next steps, ultimately providing the correct answer for our requirements. Okay, then I will briefly uh, provide a brief introduction to the agent uh, based on the LLM. Uh, in an LLM-powered agent system, uh, the LLM uh, functions as the agent's brain and is completed by several key components. Uh, first one is planning. The agent breaks down large, uh, large tasks into smaller ones and manage both the subscores, enabling uh, enable us to efficient handling uh, the complex tasks. And the se second one is reflection and refinement. And the agent can engage in self-criticism and self-reflection uh, over the past actions that they do, uh, learning from the mistakes and refine them for future steps thereby improving the quality of the final results. 
Uh, the, sec, sec, uh, the third one is the memory. Uh, Short-term memory can be considered uh, considered as the analyzation of the incontest learning uh, ability. Uh, the long-term memory provides the agent with the capability to retrain and recall information over extended periods, often leveraging by an external vector store or fast retrieval. Um, the final one is tool using. The agent learns to call external APIs for extra information uh, that which, which may be uh, missing from the model ways, including current information, code execution, capabilities, access to property information sources, uh, and so on. So uh, this is the basic ability of the LM access as single agent. Uh, nowadays, multi-agent is also a hot topic recent hot topic. Uh, the research on uh, multi-agent system can may be mainly uh, divided into two major categories. The first one is cooperative multi-agent systems. And in this category, uh, multi-agents need to work together to comply, uh, uh, to comply some complex tasks that a single agent cannot handle. For example, multi-agents collaborating on search and, uh, on search and rescue missions, or uh, multiple nodes in a smart grid jointly optimizing power, of optimizing the power distribution. Uh, collaborating mechanisms include the task allocation, planning, communication, negotiation, and learning, which ensure the agent can effectively share information, uh, allocate resources, and coordinate uh, uh, actions. The second one is adversarial multi-agent system. The adversarial multi-agent systems involve multiple agents interacting in competitive or hostile uh, environments. Uh, where to each, each agent tries to maximize its own interest, hopes possibly at the expense of the other agents. The most typical example are various scenarios in game theory, such as multiplayer games, auctions, and uh, negotiations. In such system, agents need to develop strategies to predict and uh, influence the behavior of other agents. Uh, they also can counteract the strategies of other agents. Uh, this requires the agent to possess a high degree of strategizing, adaptability, and robustness. So uh, compared to traditional uh, models, uh, larger models can provide richer expressive power, uh, can, can provide a, a better understanding of the text and the objects. Additionally, due to their exposure to a large amount of informative textual data, they possess sufficient one knowledge so moreover, uh, library models can interact with the user to obtain more comprehensive user side information, which makes, uh, inter which makes the interaction more natural and directive. Uh, this also contributes to the further uh, development of uh, conversational recommender systems. So furthermore, library models have a, a strong generalization ability. Uh, after learning a task in a specific domain, they can quickly adapt to other domains. Uh, what's even more re remarkable is that after learning tasks A and tasks B, they can freely analyze these two tasks to accomplish other tasks. For example, after learning inductive and the code generating tasks, they can summarize code. So of course, uh, library models also uh, provide new learning paradigms and model frameworks, which will be further elaborated in conjunction with the following LLM for REC part. So before we talk about the LLM for REC, uh, we believe that uh, we think that there are main two two main changes in uh, using larger models for recommendation. Uh, larger models are often trained on high quality texts, which are with very high fluency, such as web texts, uh, wikis, and books. However, we often need to uh, consider inputting some input some items in recommendations, and this item by item arrangement is a very affluent natural language expression. Uh, although people can understand the item by item, but for LLM, this may be out of distribution data. So you can see that when you directly input some recommended text, uh, recommended text into the LLM, you will find a very high complexity, which shows that this distribution is not directly suitable for the LLM. On the other hand, as its uh, language ability increases, it is obvious that the model will be lazy and will be trying to use its own semantic ability to make recommendations while ignoring collaborative information. Uh, we have mentioned before that this is a very important recommendation attribute. Uh, so now uh, I, I'd like to introduce some uh, ready to work and, pro uh, and progress in uh, lm 4 rec specifically for the in-contest learning ability. Uh, in, the LM, uh, in the part of this uh, uh, lm 4 rec we will uh, focus on three key aspects. The first one is how to analyze LLMs. 
Uh, this includes directly adapting in-contact learning, turning LLMs, and authorizing LLM as an agent. The, third one, uh, the, the, the second one is the evaluation metrics. This encompasses the performance of recommendations and other trustworthiness, uh, uh, other trustworthiness factors such as uh, privacy, fairness, and so on. So the final one is the information modalities. This, info, uh, this involves the direct use of LLM's text modalities, as well as other modalities uh, that we will be discussed uh, in the following parts. So next, uh, we will dive into each of these parts and uh, exploring the latest advancements, advancements and understanding their implication in the field of LLM for REC. Uh, firstly, I will uh, dis uh, discuss at directly analyzing in learning ability for recommendation. Uh, we should directly use LLM to improve the recommendation accuracy and only use the uh, test modality. Um, so first, uh, let's understand why we can use in-contest learning uh, for recommendation directly. Uh, the primary reason is that LLM says a wealth of what knowledge, along with remarkable abilities such as reasoning, instruction following. Uh, LLMs can directly leverage for recommendation tasks through in-contest learning. So this existing work in this area encompasses uh, three main aspects, which we will briefly introduce um, one by one. Uh, as we have mentioned in the previous slide, we can utilize the uh, in-class learning to directly enable LLM to make recommendations. Here's an uh, uh, example of how to, uh, how to use in-class learning for recommendation tasks. In this work, the author explores three, uh, approach, three approaches to marrying the working capabilities of LLM, the point-wise, the pair-wise, and the list-wise. On the left of the pic of, of the, of the fig, uh, on the left of this figure, you will see some examples. Point wise involves asking the LM to predict a user's rating. Uh, while the pa uh, pairwise task the LM with determining which of two items a user prefers. The list wise asks the LM to identify the preferred item from multiple choices. By employing continuous learning in addition to directly asking asking the LM which item the user prefers. You can also provide some examples for the model to follow, allowing it to learn how to respond to the task by mimicking these examples. Uh, some other works use its LLM to be ranking the results of candidate items. Uh, is this a work LLM rank? Uh, it's make, uh, made up of three parts. On the left is the natural uh, language input of the user's historical behavior, uh, which can be input a variety of ways. And these ways will be illustrated in the next slide. Uh, the middle part of this candidate side is equivalent to the traditional uh, recall stage. Now the task of the other models is to rank these items to achieve better recommendations. The author, the author no noticed that uh, the LM was more sensitive to the position of the candidate items uh, when they are doing re-rank. Uh, re so the author adopted the method to shuffling the order and then bootstrap the result to reduce the influence of a uh, position bias. Finally, the author constructs the aforementioned things into an instruction through the template, and then inputs the instruction into LLM to obtain the recommendation results. Okay, so the three types of problems are showing this in this slide. The first type involves using a user's interaction historically uh, directly to the um, LLM. The second type builds on the first one by emphasizing the user's most recent interactions. While well, the third, the third type goes a step further by providing additional examples of recommended items, and these problems can be enhanced to improve the uh, relevance and personality of recommendations, making them more useful to the user. Uh, so, in the in the previous two work, we have already seen the importance of problems in current learning. By constructing appropriate prompts, we can accomplish. Uh, the different tasks to assist in making recommendations. So in this paper, they also specifically op optimize the prompts to enhance the recommendation capabilities. The overall framework mainly composed of three key components. Specifically, prompt, uh, prompt uh, specifically we first uh, to generate an initial prompt that direct uh, the LLMs in dynamic comprehending the semantic user intents as a session level within a session. Subsequently, uh, we, we want to evaluate, refine, augment, and optimize the initial prompt through the self-reflection. Uh, in detail, the author first collects incorrect examples, and then asks the LLM to write the reasons for the errors in those examples. 
and finally modify the parameter based on the reason selected. Uh, lastly, the LLM is designed to properly select optimized uh, uh, problems by exploiting the robust generability of LLMs. Thus, this method can maximize the accuracy components of the sequential recommendation system. And the previous rework uh, is for the direct use of library models for recommendations. So uh, there are other ways we can apply the implementation capability of library models to do recommendations. The answer is right. The author of this paper, uh, KR, is for the use of the incompatible learning of library models to enhance traditional language models or to enhance traditional recommendation models so that the traditional recommendation models can obtain what knowledge from the LLM. Uh, firstly, let's uh, look at the advantage and disadvantage of the traditional and uh, lateral models. As you can see, traditional models in France are fast but are closed system, which limits them to a local data set. While lateral models can apply open world knowledge, but it, it is not trained on specific recommendation tasks. So the uh, recommendation performance is uh, not very good. Uh, it is also relatively slow to inference uh, when compared with the traditional models. So we are using this way in class learning to extract the raw knowledge of a library model to benefit the traditional model. On the left of this figure is the use of class learning to make a library model generate a uh, textual representation with one knowledge. So that's knowledge beyond the local recommendation data set can be obtained. And in the middle of this figure, uh, they include the test form to uh, they encode the uh, knowledge and map it into the recommendation space. And uh, finally, this part is to uh, edit, edit this feature to traditional recommendation models session and uh, uh, get uh, achieve uh, better results. Uh, in addition to leveraging internet learning to enhance those CTR models, uh, this uh, work can explore the use of internet learning to augment the graph based recommender systems. Uh, specifically, three enhancement approaches are employed in, in this paper. Uh, enhance the user item uh, interactions, user profiles, and item attributes. As illustrated, uh, in, as illustrated in, this in this figure, the, the author inputs the information about the users and items into ChatGPT and instruct the ChatGPT to select the one item that the user likes and the one item that the user dislikes. <clears throat> this selection is then extracted and used as a training data point. However, those results may contain some noise. So they first denoise this uh, enhanced results and then integrated into graph-based recommender systems. The enhanced uh, interaction can be stressed. Uh, the enhanced user item instructions can be stressed uh, the age of the graph, while uh, user profiles and item attributes can uh, enrich the embedding features. Also, uh, apart from the sequential and the CTR setting, uh, Lagrange model itself have because Lagrange model itself have a, a strong chatting ability. So we can think about whether we can apply Lagrange models to conversational recommender systems. Uh, here is an example of conversational recommenders. Uh, where user interact with a dialogue recommender system in natural language. In the process of this interaction, the user's preference and discovered by the Recommender system. The conversation chatbot needs to analyze the user preference and then make recommendations. Uh, for example, in the upper right, uh, the user interacts with the conversation recommender systems through natural language. During, during this interaction, the system uncovers the user's preference. The chatbot in the conversation needs to analyze the preference and then provide recommendations. Okay, another working uh, 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 using a large language model to a conversation recommender system. Uh, explore the effect of using a larger model directly for uh, conversational recommender systems. Uh, before making conversational recommendation, uh, they, uh, they claim that they need, we need to form, formulate the uh, conversational recommendation, turn data into a format that uh, is convenient for larger model recommendation and evaluation. This diagram shows how to evaluate the conversation recommendations using a, a larger language model. It is mainly divided into three parts task description, uh, format requirement, and the context of the conversation. After this, the actions are constructed as prompt and input into the LLM. The LLM will output the recommendation in the given format, and then uh, they will map the recommendation to the data in the data set. This can achieve through something matching, uh, so, uh, matching our result. This way, uh, we can ensure the LLM's conversation recommendation capabilities. Okay, so the... Uh, 
part of the internet using internet learning to uh, rec uh, LLM for recommendation uh, is over. Uh, next, please uh, welcome Wenjie to introduce the following parts of the LLM for recommendation. Okay, thank you, Kashi. Uh, so, hello everyone, I'm uh, Wang Wenjie, I'm from uh, AOS. So, uh, I will introduce the following part. So, so uh, Kaxin have introduced that we will have uh, three dimensions to introduce the progress of the library and models. So, Kaxin have in, has introduced the part about how to um, optimize accuracy for library and model based uh, recommendation. Okay. So, first we have introduced how to optimize accuracy for uh, large level robots recognition and by using the in-contact learning part. And I will introduce how to um, use tune uh, large level models for recognition task and uh, for to optimize the accuracy. Yeah. So actually, uh, from our experience, we have found that uh, just using in-contact learning for recognition is not enough because uh, actually in complex uh, complex scenarios, uh, maybe the large model without Recommender tuning cannot achieve good performance because uh, in the pre-training part or instruction uh, tuning part of existing learning models, it don't involve the recommending task, right? So uh, the learning model cannot well uh, understand this kind of task and give good performance. For example, it's uh, when we use ChatGPT to do some CTR uh, task. The ChatGPT usually give positive rating or refuse to answer. So this is the one, uh, Big problem and it's not aligned well with uh, recommendation tasks. So uh, to uh, address this uh, issue, actually existing work, existing work have considered using the uh, tuning technology to in enhance the recognition ability of existing learning models. It can be divided into two uh, parts, I guess. One is uh, using the uh, discriminate uh, man, in a discriminative manner and uh, using the summer tuning task to uh, generate the, I, I guess, to, to, in a, uh, to tune the like, models for random tasks in a discriminative way. And another part about using the learning model for generative manner. Yeah. So, uh, to, uh, so to, for the first part, actually, there are two lines of work. One is about Parameter efficient tuning and another is about full tuning. Full tuning means that they can try all the parameters of the learning model. And for the first one, uh, parameter efficient fine tuning, it, uh, here is called PEFT uh, tuning here. So for this kind of model, they're only using some, uh, maybe it's using LoRa or some, uh, only tune a uh, few layers of the learning model for recommendation task. For the second part, actually, it's different. For the first part, in, in a discriminatory way, it means that uh, given that you may be given the user and uh, we can give some item candy list. Okay. So for the uh, first part, it will give some candy item candies and to give the ratings or the ranking score of the list. But for the second one, it's, it's given the user in time history maybe and the user profile, it will directly generate as target item. So it will not provide any candy item for as the input. So for the first part, I will first introduce the some work in the first part in a discriminatory way. And the first work about the power act. 
Hagrid is told uh, my idea is that Torak is about we can tune the uh, maybe we can use LoRa to tune uh, uh, part of parameters, maybe maybe four million parameters by some two short samples by we using the traditional generative laws, and we can find that it can quickly adapt to new tasks by using a uh, few short samples, maybe 100 samples. They, they can, uh, they can, the model can learn how to do recommendation task. And based on the, the in, for this kind of model, the input is given the user uh, features and item features, it will do uh, uh, maybe a classification task like, so, so it's, a, I guess it's, a, can you call it a CTR task here? So given the user and items, and we will predict whether this user will like this item. So it's, it can be treated as a discriminatory way, yeah. So after we, uh, if we train this kind of model and we can find that we, if we use future training, only use uh, maybe 100 samples on our first on our, uh, source domain, and we can find it will have some cross domain generation ability. For example, we can train the library model on the movie data set and we can test it on book. And we can also turn on it on book and test it on movie data set. So we can find that by using very a few uh, examples, for example, only uh, less than 100 samples, it can achieve good cross domain generalization ability. Uh, if we, uh, how if this is about how we, we can input maybe the user features and item features to predict whether this user will like this item. Another uh, idea, another uh, direction is about we can input the user interaction history, right? We can also provide the item candidates and we can predict whether the user with this kind of history will like this kind of item. So, uh, but for the user with a long history uh, as the input, we how to process, uh, process this kind of long inputs. Uh, these people propose the idea about we can do summarization by using the kind of Lyrian model. We can do two kinds of summarization. One is called hierarchical summarization. Uh, summarization. We can use uh, maybe a, a two-level summarization. First, we summarize the part of history, and the way we, we summarize the previous summary uh, over a, a small period, maybe. So we can have a long. Uh, we can have a summary for the long history. This is called a hierarchical summarization. Sorry. So for the second uh, uh, part, it's about using the recurrent summarization. For the recurrent summarization, it will just split the long history into several parts, and then we can uh, model each part one by one and in a sequential uh, manner. So it's called a recurrent summarization. When we have good summarization over the user long history, we can input as the uh, user features. And um, so we can do the prediction for this kind of user and item pair. Uh, this is uh, about uh, this is about uh, only doing the uh, I guess only for following the recommendation instructions about for example given the user history uh, ask the library model to generate a uh, to to judge whether this user will like this kind of item. Uh, how about we give different or uh, or uh, diverse uh, instructions for the recommend task? And this work is called instruction like they will consider multiple. Uh, recommendation related instructions. For example, it will uh, in, in, include some uh, recommendation instruction with search queries. This kind of uh, multiple, multiple the information from multiple sources and uh, with diverse user instructions. Maybe the instruction is quite different from uh, user to user. So for this part, for this one, it will, it will first define some uh, user instructions and then it will, it can do the instruction tuning with this kind of diverse instructions. For the first part, it de uh, de defines several, I guess, can be called instruction templates. So it will include three parts. One about the preference part and another one about the intention. So preference, I guess it mainly uh, represents the user some long tail, uh, long term uh, uh, interest. And for int uh, intention, it, it describes the current user uh, preference or the current user query. And uh, for the third part is to define the task. So this uh, instruction is uh, okay. Sorry, let me check how. Oh, 
Uh, okay. I guess it, it's okay. <laughs> Let's continue. So for each uh, incision, I guess it includes uh, this three kind of three part lines about the preference. It covers some long term uh, preference and the uh, intention covers the, the, cut, the uh, short term, maybe the user priorities or the intention, and also design the task. Uh, from three parts is about the point wise is to do given the user and the item pair and to predict whether this user will like this item. For the pairwise uh, task, I guess it's, it's about given this user and the two items and we can judge whether this item is better than another one. Uh, for the list wise, it will give a uh, give item list and to rank the, car, the item candidates or to return or recommendation list. And after the, after the definition of this kind of instructions, we can uh, just uh, we can use the ChatGPT to uh, but how can we obtain uh, this kind of instruction from the current from the existing recommendation data set? In the existing recommendation data set, we only have the user item instruction, right? So we don't we, we we currently we don't have the user instructions from uh, from the real users and about using the sorry. Okay, move to the next slide and go back. <laughs> okay, um, so so we can use ChatGPT to simulate this kind of user instructions to generate the user instructions from the user interaction data. And the main idea is that we can just uh, collect the using the existing data set and the in, uh, fit them into ChatGPT and the ChatGPT to simulate the user instructions. And we can also use multiple suggestions to uh, diversify this kind of uh, user instruction because maybe the, for this kind of template, the user instruction are, um, are not diverse enough. So uh, this work in Instructor Rec also evaluated the quality of this kind of uh, user instruction by, by, uh, doing, by doing the uh, human evaluation. They found that the ChatGPT generated uh, user instruction is, is is kind of good. And uh, after uh, we have this kind of uh, user instruction, we can do the instruction tuning, right? So given these kind of user instructions and the target uh, um, uh, items and all the target response, we can do the instruction tuning like in the tr uh, traditional language like model training. So we can use the generate auto regressive generation loss to do this kind of training. So this is about several works. In the first part, uh, they will give some I, uh, item candidates and to rank the existing item or rate the, uh, the given item candidates. And for the second part, it will uh, do it in a generative way. So it means that given the user uh, interaction history and some user features or user profile or context, this kind of user information, uh, it, this, kind of, uh, uh, this kind of task will directly ask the library model to generate the target items or, the, or generate uh, uh, an item list. So I will introduce several uh, works here. The first one is called Big Rack. So for uh, for Big Rack, the, the, the idea is quite simple, I guess. So they just uh, they kind of this this work just uh, directly input the user uh, interaction history uh, by using the item titles to represent each item. So for you each user, the interaction history is a sequence of item titles. Is a, so is a token sequence, right? So the maybe the next, they will translate uh, the next item prediction task as the next token prediction task. Because we will predict a sequence of tokens of the uh, target item. So the target item have an uh, item title. So we just predict the kind of uh, item title. But for the big red, one problem is that the library model do not know uh, how to represent an item, right? Because maybe for some item, we don't know uh, the existence of this kind of item. So uh, we need less, we need a uh, trained language model to align well with this kind of uh, uh, maybe the recommendation is called recommendation space. So for the recommendation space, it will uh, have include many uh, valid item titles, and it will 
teach the Lambda model to, to given the user history to generate a, a, a valid item title as the recommendation. Uh, but uh, if this is for the training part, right? But for the inference, given the user interaction history uh, with the, a sequence of item titles, this kind of model will uh, maybe, maybe, may, may, uh, may generate uh, an item title that doesn't uh, exist in the real world, right? So how to solve this kind of problem if the library model do not generate valid item titles? So the, the idea is that they can do another uh, stage is called uh, grounding stage. stage for the, it's called step two. So for step two, it will, uh, for, for step two, given the user interaction history and uh, the library model generates an ideal item title. So we can, in a step two, we can map the generated item title with the existing item title by using the L2 distance. So the similarity uh, matching. And uh, for in the, so we can give a ranking list for the existing item titles in the actual item uh, space. So that's for this grounding part, I'm going to have two steps. One is uh, given the user history with, in, uh, and to generate an ideal uh, item title and then match the uh, generate the item title to the existing item titles. Uh, so this is a result of big rack. So in big in this big rack paper, the, author, the authors find a uh, very um, I guess a very interesting uh, phenomena is about we can use just maybe just the one hundred uh, uh, samples we can teach the library model to gen generate valid uh, item titles and can do a good have a good recognition performance. Uh, and the performance uh, even surpass the existing uh, methods with uh, full sample training. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, this is a figure show <clears throat> the, this uh, phenomenon more uh, clearly because uh, if we use only maybe uh, 1,000 <clears throat> samples, we can achieve a good performance for this kind of uh, <clears throat> level model based method. And for the traditional method, only use maybe uh, for the traditional sequential recommended models by using maybe, so for example, uh, SASRAC using self-attention, this kind of a model, they only use 100 samples, it, it cannot achieve a good recommended performance. So it will need the extensive training with uh, a large scale of training data. And we can compare the performance improvement, the, the relative improvements across, uh, across the with respect to the increase of the sample number, we can find the, the increase of this, uh, this kind of uh, performance is not very, it will, for the linear model based method, it will not increase a lot with the, in, as the increase of the sample number. We calculate the relative in from in here. So we can find that for the, for the traditional method, the increment, uh, the improvements, relative improvements is very large because if we increase the data sample, it can better capture the collaborative filtering signals across users and items. And for the traditional, uh, for the library model based method, the relative improvement is very, is, is minor. Uh, is minor because we can find because we, we, we argue that we, we assume that maybe the one reason is that uh, the library model based method they cannot well utilize this, you know, the, this kind of collaborative filtering signals in the data set. So, how to uh, validate, this kind of, validate this kind of assumption? We, uh, our idea is that we can directly inject this kind of uh, statistics information into the library model, and we can test whether if we inject the collaborative filtering signals, the popularity signals into the library model, whether the performance will increase uh, or not. So from the left figure, we directly uh, calculate the popularity of the item in the data set. And then in the, for the uh, second step, we do, will do the distance uh, Ground, uh, level to distance grounding, right? So we will calculate the score of each item. So we can directly combine the, uh, the similarity score with the popularity. So we can see that as, as if we inject, if we inject this kind of popularity, the performance will increase a lot, a lot for this kind of uh, big rack models. 
<clears throat> so it, it will show that the popularity, the kind of popularity information is very important for this kind of model. And uh, for the right figure, we inject some collaborative, uh, info, uh, collaborative uh, uh, filtering signals. And the idea that we can maybe we can use another model to capture this kind of collaborative filtering signals, and we combine these together, these two models together. And from the result, we can find that for the traditional method, maybe the uh, Sasrak, the, uh, the, if we uh, combine two models together, the performance will, will not increase. We are not increased a lot, but for the big rack, if we uh, incorporate the kind of collaborative filtering signals, the performance increase uh, have a large improvement. So it will show that if we can well inject the collaborative filtering signals into the, uh, the kind of big big rack model, the performance will have will performance will have a large space to improve. So, uh, <clears throat> so to summarize the, the previous uh, big rack model, I guess the main idea is that first we need to use item title to index the items into the library space because we can use the item title to represent the item, all right? And then we can uh, generate the item title. So we ground the uh, generate uh, item title to the item space. So, but any other, uh, solutions to do this kind of item indexing because if we can do this kind of indexing, we can just uh, translate the item, uh, uh, the item in the recommendation space and also the uh, the tokens in the library space. If we can do this kind of indexing, the uh, the, the following task becomes similar, uh, becomes simple because we uh, for the user input we can just uh, translate it into the token sequence, right? For the generation part, we can just directly generate the uh, the identifier of this, the identifier of this uh, item. So uh, this work proposed another way to index this kind of uh, items in the recommendation data. So the idea that we can we use a multiple view to represent an item. Maybe uh, we have an ID uh, to capture this kind of uh, distinguishing, uh, 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 I guess witnessness. And also some item titles to uh, represent in, uh, by using the the uh, sim by incorporating the semantic information and also using kind of attributes. So for this work, it will uh, consider multi type of identifiers to represent this kind of one item. And for the generation uh, for big rack, actually to use the free generation uh, plus. The, uh, the grounding part, right? So to calculate the similarity by using the L2 distance to rank the existing item. Uh, for this work, it will it use the uh, cons called constraint generation. So it will restrict the generation space of the uh, Lagrange model. So this kind of Lagrange model can only generate the valid uh, item identifiers in when they when uh, they doing they are doing the beam search uh, search part. So it will use the tree structure to restrict the kind of uh, generation space. Uh, from the results, uh, they also find some more uh, phenomena. So I just highlight two points here. Why is that? Uh, for on the item side, they find that this kind of model, we, when we use the semantic uh, information, maybe the item type and attributes, they can do, they have, uh, this kind of model will have a good generalization ability. On, from the warm to the cold uh, start items. And on the user side, they will, they, they have, the authors have, have found that for the sparse users, this kind of model can still have a good performance. So for, if we can use the I mean, the kind, kind of uh, item titles and the user, the kind of uh, multi view identifier, so it will have good generalization over the code, the long tail user and the item, user and the items. So um, maybe another question is, uh, is and, uh, are there any other solutions to tokenize the items of the uh, user interaction sequence? So this is another way, it's called codebook based uh, identifiers. So for the for e each item with the semantic information, with the item title, uh, the um, 
we can use the, another model. It's called AQVE. It's a VE based uh, in auto encoder decoder, um, uh, encoder decoder structure. So it will encode the item semantics into the some code sequence. And uh, for this kind of model, it will have a code book to uh, it will have a code book to uh, record all the code embeddings and to match the item. Uh, semantic into this uh, code book and to generate the code uh, sequence. After we get this kind of uh, code uh, book based identifier, we can fit this kind of identifier into the learning model to do some alignment task to inject the, the collaborative filtering signal. And uh, in the big rack, we, we only do the instruction tuning, the, the simplest uh, instruction tuning, just given the user uh, history as input and generates the next item as the target. And for this, this, this work, uh, they, they design um, many other alignment tasks to inject the uh, collaborative filtering signal. For example, uh, some are uh, given the uh, item ID to predict uh, the item semantic information to predict the item title is a kind of alignment task. So, uh, in the previous slides, I introduced how to use the tuning to uh, optimize uh, accurate metric for Lagrange model based uh, based recommender models. Uh, and for the next uh, part, I will introduce the development of using uh, agents for recommendation. This is also a very hot topic here uh, recently. Uh, to summarize, uh, I guess the, the, can, the existing work can be divided into two uh, parts. Uh, one is using uh, agent as a user simulator. Another one is using uh, agent for recommendation uh, directly as the recommended model to recommend some content or items to users. So for the uh, first, for the first research line, uh, actually, the main idea that we uh, since uh, we have we, we of course we need this kind of user simulator because the user simulator is quite important for uh, maybe interactive uh, evaluation or conversational recognition or some uh, long term uh, recognition tasks. Uh, if if we want to this kind of user simulator for uh, the evaluation of some interactive trainings for this kind of task, well, we can be, uh, in the previous. Uh, Work. I guess we can define some uh, uh, rule-based simulators, maybe use some click model or other things to do the user simulation. But uh, uh, can we use the library model to simulate the user since the library model can memorize the user uh, history and or reason, the user, reason over the user history very well. So uh, there is uh, a line of work. They are doing this kind of, uh, they are uh, doing a good kind of research. So the main idea is that we can build the user agent like like this, so we can have the profile uh, a module and also have some uh, mem uh, memory module and also some action module. And for the profile manager, we will call the user profiles and for maybe for uh, the uh, memory module, it will recall the long-term user preference and some short-term user uh, interest. And also with this, this kind of Agents can interact with the environment. For example, uh, doing the uh, receive the recommendation and give some feedback. Right? And also, they can uh, chat with each other to have some conversation. And also, the the kind of agent can do can post some information on the social network, and they can communicate, they can comment on the post. So it simulates the user behavior on the social network. Uh, for this kind of uh, this kind of uh, uh, agent-based simulator, uh, they, they, uh, for in this paper, the, the authors have uh, considered to simulate uh, the user behavior under different and two uh, kind of uh, I guess recommendation phenomena to simulate the two kind of uh, recommendation phenomena. One is the uh, field bubble issue, and another one is the user conformity. And for, they can do the simulation over a long period and uh, to simulate user behavior in different rounds and uh, uh, collect their feedback to uh, valid, valid whether uh, this kind of uh, recommendation will cause the uh, field bubble issue. Yeah. Uh, this is another work called uh, Agent for Rec to simulate users. 
and uh, this is based on the Google Lens data set. Uh, it will uh, build a uh, 1,000 IR powered uh, generative agents, and uh, the agents uh, is trained on the uh, Google Lens data set. It will use the user profile of the Google Lens data set, and uh, uh, is we already use the uh, the blue profile of the movie lens that's at, and the user 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 interaction to validate whether this kind of sim simulator is good. So uh, for, so the, uh, the evaluation is like this: how well how well can this kind of error simulate the users? So the they are, they here are two uh, solutions to validate. Uh, first one is that we can use uh, we can uh, uh, use this kind of simulator to judge whether uh, this uh, they can distinguish the positive and the negative items for each user. Maybe we have diff, uh, uh, user uh, positive and negative sample ratio in uh, different ratios, and we can validate whether uh, this uh, kind of user simulator can give the correct or the ground truth uh, feedback. To distinguish these kind of positive and negative samples, and also we can uh, have we have calculated the distribution of the real uh, the rating of distribution of the real user, and also the uh, the rating distribution of the generated users. We can find we can to check whether their distribution is uh, similar. Yeah. So this is, I can introduce two works of uh, using agent for uh, uh, agent user simulation and also um, some work, I guess uh, more work is on this part about using agent for recommendation. Uh, for the main idea is that we can, uh, maybe we can uh, use the deep powerful uh, capabilities of library model, for example, the reasoning, uh, the planning, the reflection of the tool usage abilities for recommendation. Uh, for the first, uh, for this this work is called Rack Mind, and uh, for this work, uh, actually the main idea is that we can uh, given the user uh, in, uh, input, maybe the user profile with some interaction history and uh, maybe the context. This uh, library model, this agent can uh, decompose the uh, hard tasks into different uh, subtasks by using the planning ability. And also, it uh, calls some tools uh, to solve this kind of problem. Uh, so, for the planning, they can uh, decompose the uh, complex task into different subtasks by using the uh, this kind of DFS based method. It's called uh, trail of salt. For each salt, is to reflect. The, uh, the reasoning over the user impact history to check whether the reasoning is good or not, and to uh, decide the next step is, uh, is to call uh, uh, maybe a tool, a third tool, or maybe to, to search the external uh, the history, maybe information, or using other uh, 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 technology, maybe summarize the user preference. So it, it will have different actions search actions and uh, maybe the summarization actions. So it will decompose uh, the, this kind of recommendation task into, diff, uh, into many subtasks. And the result have, sh uh, have shown that for uh, this kind of uh, few shot, uh, few shot is based on content learning and uh, zero shot is directly use the uh, uh, previous library models and we can we can find that this kind of model can achieve good performance uh, over than the fully trained, uh, maybe the P5 uh, models. Okay, so uh, uh, for another work is called Agent CF, which uh, the, main, the main difference, I guess, the, or the normal idea here is that it will include uh, two kinds of agents. One uh, agent is to simulate, is to simulate users, and another uh, one is to do the, uh, the recognition task. So we will have an uh, interaction between two tasks. It's called collaborative reflection optimization mechanism. So two agents will uh, collaborate together and to optimize each other, uh, each other using using the neutral feedback, I guess. So uh, we can find that if we use this kind of uh, 
uh, collaborative optimization, it can achieve a good, a better performance by to fit the existing recommendation data. So given the traditional recommendation data, we can use one or uh, two agents to simulate the two parts and do the interaction. And then we can uh, check whether this kind of agents can well do well uh, recommendation, yeah. So we can find that the collaborative refraction is effective to uh, uh, to improve the recommendation performance and also it reduce the uh, the effect of the popularity bias. So uh, in the previous uh, slides, I guess uh, the existing work have used the, the, the models, maybe the planning ability, the planning ability, the tool usage ability, and uh, uh, some collaboration abilities. And for this, this work, it, it, it will consider using the planning ability of the uh, library model for uh, long-term recommendation optimization. It means that we have some long-term goals for recommendation task, right? Maybe some uh, proactive recommendations we can uh, diversify or uh, increase the diversity of the multi-term uh, recommendation list. So to optimize this kind of long-term goals, uh, this uh, work is called uh, uh, BLEEP. Uh, it will use some of the planning ability to do two levels of, of optimization. Sorry. The first level is that it will do a micro level to optimize the policy, the, the, uh, the guidance to, to, op, to, to guide the optimization of the recommendation policy. So uh, in a low level, a micro level, uh, it will optimize the recommendation policy to do the uh, to generate the real uh, recommendations. But there is a guidance here, so it will uh, guide how the recommendation will change accordingly. Maybe the uh, micro uh, level of optimization will give some guidance like this to that, uh, in this turn, maybe diversify the recommendation list, uh, and in the next turn to improve the accuracy instead of that uh, diversity. This kind of guidance to guide the, op the, uh, the selection of the uh, uh, recognition policy in, in the micro level. Yeah. Uh, from the results, we can find that uh, this kind of uh, um, this kind of planning can achieve better long-term performance. It will increase the interaction terms between the agent and the user simulator. Yeah, this, in this work, uh, uh, the, the authors used a simulator to sync users to link, interact with this kind of uh, uh, agent. And the metric is to, to evaluate whether the user simulator, simulator will have a, a uh, longer uh, in, in, uh, multi term interactions with the uh, agent. So we can find that the, the kind of learning model based uh, agent can, have, can achieve better long term performance than traditional IR based models. And, it, and also, the better planning ability, for example, maybe in the uh, micro level, it will give some guidance like diversify the recognition list and the call number. And so, the, in the Micro levels, it will uh, optimize the recognition policy to diversify the recognition list. So it will favor some long term uh, items and it will give a, a better recommendation results on some long term uh, items. Uh, sorry, sorry, long tail items. And it will have give some, uh, we will divide the items into different groups based on the popularity. And if we, if we calculate the performance of the uh, different uh, item groups, we can find the long tail items will have a better performance. So uh, also, this, yeah, uh, I guess some work have considered using the multi-agent collaboration for recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, one uh, example is for the conventional recommendation. So the, for the conventional recommendation, uh, users will uh, in, interact with the recommendation model in a conventional way, right? So uh, for the uh, conventional recommendation module, we can decompose it into different uh, agents to achieve different tasks. Maybe some uh, respond, response uh, agent and also some control, uh, this kind of uh, control agent. So we can, it, it can still uh, better uh, do the, uh, it, can, it can achieve the uh, collaboration between different agents to give the final response for users to, to generate the condition or give, 
give some recommendations. And also we can use the agents to do different rules. Maybe for example, the search, uh, Search a uh, search agent maybe right maybe some uh, uh, analysis agent and uh, some recommendation agent or some uh, interpreter agent to do the agent uh, to do the recommendation explanation. So this kind of uh, uh, agents can do different rules to, uh, to uh, so we, we can achieve different recommendation tasks explanation maybe the user analysis maybe the search. Uh, the kind of uh, search summary information to help the recommendation. Maybe we can search the user history, uh, user uh, history interactions to help the prediction of the current uh, re recommendation results. Uh, so the, the author also built a demo to, to show the, uh, I guess it paper is established by Cigar this year. And they build, they build a demo to show the how the both multiple uh, agents can collaborate together to achieve better uh, to uh, recommendation experiments. Uh, so uh, we, in the pre uh, previous slides, we have introduced how to utilize direct models for uh, higher accuracy uh, in the uh, in the existing work. For example, using content learning using two. Uh, Instruction tuning, right? Uh, using uh, I mean, some agent uh, uh, technologies, and uh, but they are all in the text modality. So only using some text modality information from the user and the item and the context side. Um, uh, of course, we can consider uh, encoding the uh, encode the multiple mod multiple uh, model information from the user and the item size. For example, each item will have some image, maybe uh, a micro video will have some cover image, right? Also some video content and some textual uh, descriptions. And we can leverage this kind of, uh, I guess, uh, model, uh, this kind of uh, multi-model features to do better uh, recommendation because the learning model have, have, have good uh, reasoning ability, right? Uh, understanding ability. So we, if we input more data, maybe, uh, it will have some noise, but uh, it can also provide uh, more, uh, more information for the learning model to reason the user uh, preference. So uh, actually some work have tested the moments of GP4 way uh, for recommendation. It can achieve uh, good zero-shot recognition ability, and also uh, they, they have uh, a series of uh, test, the testing examples show that uh, it will have a zero remarkable <clears throat> zero performance uh, and because maybe because we don't uh, uh, train this kind of model for recommendation, but, right? but it can using the I can use the, the uh, rich world knowledge and some common knowledge to reason the connection or the similarity across different items. So the, it will it can also provide some recommendation for users. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we all know we uh, just uh, this morning the OpenAI has released the. Uh, model called uh, GPT for ORAN. So it can generate a multiple, multiple, uh, multimodal content currently. So I guess maybe there are also, we are also some work that test, we are testing how to generate best, better, uh, maybe the uh, recognition content for users. I use this kind of uh, multimodal uh, language model. Yeah. Uh, I guess there are several filter directions for this part, maybe, uh, maybe using the uh, how to tokenize the items with uh, some, some uh, more multimodal features, and also to uh, maybe do it to revise the, the model structure to uh, better leverage the kind of uh, multimodal information. And also, of course, when we input uh, more user and features, it will. Uh, Obviously, in general, some noise, right? Maybe most features are not related to user preference. So it will inc uh, include some noise. How to reduce the, kind of the effect of the kind of noise? Also, some, uh, I guess, future idea uh, directions. Yeah, thank you. So I will introduce, uh, uh, introduce a part of, of uh, how to uh, improve the accuracy for the text in the existing work about uh, library model for recommendation. So in the, I guess in the, after coffee break, we will introduce how to improve the trust coarseness to better align the library model for recommendation task. So for the first part, I need questions. Yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah.
Any questions? Okay, if no questions, maybe we uh, can have a quick break and uh, come back uh, at 11 a.m. Yeah. And we can also uh, talk offline, yeah. If you have uh, any question, welcome to come to us, yeah. Thank you, thank you for attending this tutorial.